Hello! Welcome to the Sin City Gun Guy channel. I am the Sin City Gun Guy and today I am going to show you the best $36 that you can spend on this, the Ruger 1022 rifle. So again, thank you for joining us here with this video. The best $36 that you can spend on your Ruger 1022 is this. It is the Volkortsen Target Hammer Kit. Uh, this kit will dramatically improve the trigger pull of your Ruger 1022 rifle. Now for those of you who are familiar with this gun, uh, you will know that the factory trigger on these guns really isn't all that good. Uh, as a matter of fact, I find it to be rather poor. Uh, even for something like this, which uh, I built not to be a you know, precision target rifle, uh, but more of a backpacking truck, boat, motorcycle type gun, uh, I still think that the trigger is lacking it from the factory. It's uh, kind of heavy, kind of creepy. Um, they usually measure out around six to seven pounds. Uh, and there's uh, kind of a long reset on them that uh, makes, for me anyway, for my shooting, uh, quick follow-up shots a little bit more problematical. This is a gun that I've already put that kit into. Uh, this is my Ruger 1022 takedown. Uh, I've made a few improvements to this. I have placed in that kit. Now while we're replacing that kit, we're also going to add this. This is the Volkortsen Auto Bolt Release and for the money this is an excellent improvement to the gun. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the Ruger 1022 will know that there is a two-handed operation to close the bolt. Uh, this part eliminates that and it does it fairly inexpensively as well. Uh, I've also placed on this gun the XS Ghost Ring Sights for the Ruger 1022. This is an excellent sight system for a field gun, hunting gun, uh, they aren't precision target sights. You're not going to sit there with adjusting knobs and everything and get it dialed in for precision matches or anything. But they're made out of steel. They're very rugged, very, very reliable. Not really any moving parts uh, to, that can break. But I'm going to go over that installation in a separate video. Today, I just want to focus on the trigger. Uh, this particular gun. Uh, I did write a full review of. Uh, you can actually read that entire review and everything that I did to this and all of my thoughts about uh, how this gun is put together uh, at the 1022page.com. Uh, it's the very first article that went up on the site. Pretty happy about it. Uh, and uh, certainly if this is something that interests you, uh, I think it's a good and interesting read. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the kit uh, and then we are going to disassemble a rifle, not this one, and we are going to uh, install that kit on a different rifle. Uh, so let me get that rifle and we'll be right back. All right, through the magic of editing, I am back here with a stock Ruger 1022 takedown. Um, this gun has had nothing done to it. It is exactly as it comes from the factory. Uh, so we can look at this and see why exactly we want this kit. Uh, and we're going to do that by starting with checking the trigger pull on it and see where we're, start where we're starting with. Now again, uh, like I said, the Ruger 1022 kind of has a goofy operation in that there is a tab under here that you need to, in order to release the bolt, pull back on the bolt, push up on that tab, and it's very hard to do with one hand, especially at a weird angle, pull up on the bolt, and then release. <clears throat> We're going to fix that too, uh, but let's check and see what the trigger pull is. We'll verify, yes, the gun is empty, and let's see exactly where we come in on this. Uh, just under six pounds. Uh, and this is actually, this particular one has been shot quite a bit with the factory trigger in it. So I think it's had some time to, to uh, work in a little bit.
uh, again, right at around five and a half pounds. What I will say is that when you pull this trigger, it does stack just a little bit, but not much. And then it hits a wall. And then it's kind of a little bit of a heavy pull. And then there's a definitely significant release. I think you can hear that when it resets that, that click. But let's get this gun apart and get this kit ready to go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the camera in here so that we can take a good close look at the kit and then we are going to remove the stock parts and replace them with the Volkwarzen parts. Oh, and I do want to say something while I have your attention. Uh, this is really addressed to Ruger themselves. Uh, see these stickers that you put on your stocks here? Please don't do that. Uh, they're just annoying. Uh, I know what I bought and it's just a kind of a pain to get them removed. So let's bring that camera in and we'll get going. We'll look at the parts. All right. So let's take a look at this kit and see what we've got in here. Comes in a nice little blister pack. So the parts that we're going to be replacing today are the hammer, the hammer spring, the hammer bushings, and then there's some spacers for the bushings. Uh, then you have the trigger plunger spring there. And the kit also comes with a slave pin to help you put this all together. Uh, and just so that we can look at it, because we are replacing it here, uh, we are going to be adding the uh, automatic bolt release. Now, quick word about the automatic bolt release. Uh, there are videos online that you can find, and it is not too difficult of a process to take your factory bolt release and modify it so that it does the same thing that this does. However, these parts are about 11 bucks, and honestly, uh, for the money, uh, I would just as soon not bother with that and just replace it uh, with a manufactured part. So, now let's get this gun taken apart. Okay, now the first step to taking this gun apart, of course, is to make sure that it is unloaded. In this case, it is unloaded. Now this happens to be the takedown 1022. If you were taking apart a non-takedown model, it would be a little bit different. What you would do is you would remove this barrel band by removing this screw here, and then the barrel band just simply slips forward and off the end of the barrel. However, because this is a takedown 1022, all you need to do is take the front end of this gun off. So those of you who are familiar with the takedown 1022, it disassembles with this lever right there. It pushes forward, twists, and comes out. We do not need this part for any more of the installation, so we'll put it aside. Now, this is the part that we need to get at. We're, all the parts are going into the bottom receiver. What you'll see when we take this apart is that you have the upper receiver and the bottom receiver that holds the trigger mechanism and it's held together by a couple of pins. The first thing we need to do is take out this bolt here which holds the receiver into the stock. Now that is, and I'm reaching, that's why I'm making funny noises, that is a four millimeter hex screw, at least by my measurement. Uh, if you have an older Ruger 1022, it will probably be a uh, screw, uh, just flathead screw uh, that's in there. But we're going to take this out. And it doesn't actually need to come out all the way. It screws into the uh, receiver and then there's a space and then this piece is threaded here. Now, the trick to actually removing the receiver and trigger group from the stock is you want to make sure that your safety 
because you have a cross bolt safety here, is pushed to about the middle. Not on safe, not on fire, right in the middle. Um, if you don't do this, you'll probably piss yourself off. And then this whole unit just comes right out and we can put the stock to the side now. There are two pins, pin here and pin here, that hold this together. Uh, we don't need to take the bolt out of the receiver for this operation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the bolt come forward to take tension off of the spring, and then these two pins can simply push through and out. I don't think these pins have ever been out of this gun. We will set those aside. Then your entire trigger group pulls right out of this gun. Now, a little word on the uh, trigger groups. Uh, back in the old days, these were actually made out of aluminum. These days they are made out of uh, polymer. Uh, they seem to be pretty good quality. So the next step is that we need to get these parts out of here. And again, I'm gonna grab a small punch to assist me. What we're gonna do first is we are going to take the tension off of the hammer. And there's the main hammer spring there. And you definitely need to take the tension off of that. Uh, so there's the trigger pin. And then we also need to take this top pin out. So take that, put that aside. Don't lose that. There's your hammer that's going to be replaced. My fat little fingers, of course, are in there. Um, that and then your hammer and sear come out. And this is your plunger for your trigger return spring, so that's going to be replaced. And this is your sear spring. We will be using the sear spring again. This bolt release. And now that I have it out though, I can show you exactly what the difference is between. So up top here, let me clear this out so you can see it clearly. The top is the Volkortsen replacement, and the bottom is the factory. And you can see that chiefly it's this notch is, is different, and it would need to be filed out, ground out, uh, made different in order to do what this one does. Uh, like I said, for the money, I would just go with this. So we're gonna put this to the side because we don't need that anymore. Here is your trigger, uh, your hammer spring. Now this needs to be compressed and this little disc needs to come off and then the new one needs to be put on and then this is compressed again. So we will do that. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to do what's probably the most difficult part of this operation which is taking the hammer spring out of this captive uh, unit here. Uh, and so what you need to do is you need to take the pressure off of that spring and then this little disc that holds it in place will come off. And so there we have the little piece that holds it in place and we have the trigger return spring which we are no longer going to use so we'll put it to the side with our bag of spare parts. Here is our parts, and this is the new trigger return spring. So this is going to go on here. 
Okay, so the trick of course is to get this spring compressed and get this little clip back on and you want the concave side facing away from the spring. Uh, I, like I said, I'm not in my shop here so I don't have the best tools for the job, but we are going to give this a whirl here with this guy here. And then this is going to go right onto there. And then we release. And now you have your spring captured. And now this of course is going to go in there where there's a little hole right uh, not sure you can see it there you can see my fingers behind it right there that hole is where this drops into when we're ready to put the gun together so next we are going to reassemble the hammer and we are going to do that with the hammer the sear and the little sear spring there so and this is where that slave pin is going to come in handy because this is going to go in there and this is going to go in here and that spring is going to sit in the middle of all of this and it's going to put some tension there <clears throat> but it, this piece will not stay together on its own so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little slave pin and we're going to push that guy right in there like that and now this piece is together so you now the other thing we need to do is we need to take out this uh, trigger return spring here that has a plunger. The spring did not come out. So that's the factory one right there. And it's a, we'll put that aside. And this is going to be replaced by the little quartz and part there. So we'll put the spring into the bottom of the receiver. We'll take our plunger, this is your plunger, and we will put that in. And that won't really stay too great on its own, but we'll just leave it like that for right now. Now we can start assembling the gun. Okay, so first we are going to now that we've got that new spring in there and we've got the plunger, we are going to replace our trigger. And to do that, we want to just drop it down in until you can see the slave pin through this hole here. So it's a little bit of a process. You're dealing with a lot of small parts and when you're like me and not very coordinated, uh, it can take a moment, but I see that we're going to take the proper pin and then push it through. Slave pin comes out and now your hammer is replaced. Okay, so the next part that we are going to assemble now that we have the trigger in is we are going to put our new bolt release in, which is no longer going to function as a bolt release, it's just going to be a bolt lock. And that's going to go down in there and you can see that there is a hole that goes for this pin holds your magazine release in and holds this bolt release fast. So you just kind of want to get that lined up. Take your pin and push it through and it should push through. There we go. And that goes in just like that. So next we are going to place the hammer uh, into the gun. Uh, this spring goes on the right side as the gun would be facing forward. The flat side of course is the forward side of the hammer. This notch in the back is where that little metal piece here is going to fit in and put tension on the uh, trigger. So, we are going to slide this in and kind of need three hands and a few fingers to do this, but we will get this in here. All right. 
So we've got it started and of course we need to line it up on the other side to drive it through. Should just tap right in. All right, so we have the hammer in there. You want to make sure that this little indented bent part of that spring uh, is down and can fit on top of the uh, the bolt release. Then you want to make sure that the gun is on fire so that you can release the hammer forward. And this piece will simply drop into there. And of course it needs to be vertical so that it can fit into that slot. And once it is down, it will fit right in there. And then we just have this piece and one pin left to put in. So that piece goes right in there. This pin goes through this hole here and you want to make sure that the top part of this spring is underneath it. And then you can just push it right through there. And I know it's kind of tough because it's all black on black, but you might need to fiddle with that a little bit just to get it to go through. And it's kind of one of those little fiddly deals that uh, you'll kind of play with it and then all of a sudden it'll drop in. And there we have a completely reassembled uh, trigger for our 1022. Uh, we're going to put the gun back together. It's the reverse process. Now uh, I want to just also point out this pin back here, which is a big thick pin, much thicker than the other pins, is fairly loose in there and that pin actually keeps your bolt from coming back too far. But now it's just a simple matter. We drop this right on there. We have our two pins. I'm going to start with the back. There we go, that one goes in, and then the front one and that goes in. Now this gun is ready to be reassembled, so we're going to get our stock right here. And you're going to notice there's like this little lip on the back. The best way that I've found to put these back in is to Again, center your safety in the middle so that it'll drop in, and then it drops right forward like that. And now your gun is reassembled. Let's get the front end of this thing on here and check out the trigger pull and see what it's like. Okay, we have the rifle back together. We have our little baggie of spare parts. And we are gonna now check this trigger that uh, we haven't even function, function checked it yet. Let's first take a look at this uh, bolt release. So we installed the automatic bolt release. Now we can simply grab the bolt and it'll come forward under its own power. We don't need to be fiddling with this little doodad right here. Let's lock it back. Yes, the gun is unloaded. We'll let this slide come forward and let's check the trigger now that we have replaced those parts. Well, let's make sure it's on fire. It is. about uh, two and three quarters. Let's test that one more time because I think my hand was on it. Yep, 
two and three quarters. So we've gone from about a six pound trigger down to about a two and three quarter pound trigger. And the feel on it is much better. It's got a nice crisp reset. Um, and now that part of this uh, operation is done. The next thing, like I said, we're going to do, we are going to place the excess ghost ring sights on this gun. Uh, we're setting it up exactly as mine is set up. And that is going to be the next video in this series. So stay tuned. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, I think for most 1022s, for most of what they do, this dramatically improves the trigger. 36 bucks, you can't go wrong. You can spend as much on a trigger for a 1022 as you do on the gun itself, but this is very short money for the improvement that you get. And then for the extra other little bit of money for the automatic bolt release, really turns this into a good performing little rifle. So please like and subscribe. Please stay tuned. We are going to do the sights on this gun next. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.